him rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, 39 yards. But it's a fumble. But Miami keeps the ball. Robert Jones is there and helps sets up a touchdown run by Lamar Smith, 21-17. And then more special teams. This isn't trickery. This is good play. Jeff Ogden at his 19. Look at the speed. Picks up a convoy. And Tom, the problem is the Packers are at the top of the screen, and he's at the bottom. <laughs> he could go all the way. Touchdown. 28-17. Miami, he underkicked the coverage. Did Bird, uh, Bird well. Then fourth quarter down 28-20. Trace Armstrong beats one of those rookie tackles. Brett Favre fumbles. Dave Wants had lost 10 straight games to Brett Favre and the Packer in all those years. The Bears come on down to Miami. The weather's nice, and we're hot in the second half. 28-20. The Dolphins come from behind to beat the Pack. So if you think about it, what the Dolphins did after giving up a boatload of those points in the fourth quarter and then the first half, 7-50 to 50 if they're outscored from late at the Meadowlands and early in this game, they come roaring on 28-3, wants that relief. It was just a, a great, great comeback from a character standpoint. And, and it also, I told the guys in there that also got me off the hook for letting them practice and sleep in and everything that we did all week. I said it, uh, you know, the, the respond this way was special. It was just a, great to see our guys respond and come back and win this thing. It really was. It, uh, this was huge psychologically for us. And boom, even though the Dolphins gave up those 20 points, I think Dave Wanstead happy to get away from this game without Zach Thomas in the lineup. Hope to get him back next week. And Miami now is at 6-2 and two along with the Indianapolis Colts, which brings us to the New York Football Jets. The Jets have owned the fourth quarter, and Monday night just punctuated what they did was unbelievable as they came from way behind to win in overtime, 30-7 to to start the fourth quarter against the Dolphins. No one knows that better than the Buffalo Bills. When the two teams were 2-0, the Jets did a Hail Mary at the end of the half. The Jets uh, pulled out all the stops, running in a touchdown on fourth down and eight, and Buffalo was behind the eight ball with a lot of division losses. So into town came the New York Jets, and we've seen through the years that, well... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we watch the prairie and the big plains, and nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. But, Tom, do you think everybody understands me there at home? Some of the names may have changed, but in Buffalo, the plot remains the same. No one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Right on. But they were playing a team that could handle the Bills and Doug Flutie. Vinny Testaverde, 18 and 3 when he's a Jets starter as the first place Jets come into Buffalo. And right away, Testaverde to Fred Baxter, who rustles and Michaels and Davids his way into the end zone. We're tied at seven on the 12-yard touchdown. A tough second quarter, though, for Vinny, as he's had tough first halves, although he started well, but then this, Tommy. He's picked off by Henry Jones. 45 yards, and the Bills lead 14-7 in the second quarter. Well, Wayne Corbett runs his route slightly inside. Vinny Testaverde delivers off his back football thrown outside. Henry Jones just waits on the football, takes it, runs it into the end zone. Late in the second quarter, the Jets put together a good drive. But it's Sam Rogers that comes in and Pat Williams to force the fumble. Sam Coward, who's just continuing to impress, recovers the ball for the Bills. Two INTs and a fumble in the second quarter. Vinny, 17-7 Bills at the half. They're circling the wagons. But Al Groh, he's wearing Wade sweaters. One thing he's doing. <laughs> Bills lead 17-10 now after a Hall field goal. And Testa Verde lights it up with all the flashlights. Dwayne Crevetta to touchdown. We're tied at 17. So fourth quarter, eight minutes to go. Curtis, my favorite, Martin. Bills did a good job against him today, Tom. Keith Newman strips Martin. Coward again on the ball. Second recovery of the day. And the next play, it's Flutie. To Eric Bowles. To the one-yard line. But a penalty sets him back. The Jets defense holds only a field goal. Christie, 20 to 17, Buffalo. Six minutes left. Test of Verde. It's his quarter, the fourth quarter. To the youngster, Laverne is Coles. Keon Carpenter missed a tackle, and Coles picks up 20. Same drive under three minutes to go, third and one. And it's a big gamble. They don't run, Martin. Their gambles have paid off, but the screen to Anderson stuffed up by Coward. Yeah, and a great play by Coward because Richie Anderson does a great job of selling this play at the line of scrimmage. Coward does a better job of sniffing it out. So that forces the Jets to kick a John Hall field goal tie at a 20, and you know what's going to happen with Doug Flutie with the ball. He throws the peerless price to the 40. Then Flutie 
to Shami Morris. He makes a juggling catch. That sets up, eventually, Steve Christie with seconds left. Good! It's good! The wagon circles. The Bills finally win a game they've been losing. The Jets finally lose a game they've been winning. And Buffalo wins it by the count of 23 to 20. So now the Jets, Miami, and Indy all 6-2. and two. Buffalo at 4-4. Four and four. Could four teams make it? Who knows from that division? We'll see. You see some of the numbers. But this was a game in which the Buffalo Bills and the Jets had a role in a game the Bills absolutely had to have. And from the Jets' standpoint, let's see, 6-2 and two at the midway mm -hmm. point? I think mm -hmm. they'll take it. And they could have won well, this one. Well, and this is the Buffalo defense that I think we thought we would see the entire first half of the season. Today, they played outstanding run defense against the Jets, knew it, knowing that the Jets wanted to run the ball. 20 carries, 51 yards. So they made them a one-dimensional football team, made them depend on Vinny Testaverde to have to win the game. Vinny has been making uncharacteristic mistakes most of this season. He's been able to make a play at the end of the game and somehow win. And then there's Doug Flutie. What a great job of managing his football team. No mistakes today. Even down to, at the end of the game, moving the ball from the hash mark right. to the middle of the football field for the Christie kick and then letting the clock run down. And I love the shot of him and Wade Phillips, you know. You're welcome. Don't worry about it. It's a good thing. How about this number, Doug? This is his first home start this year in the NCAA at Boston College and at the USFL and in the NFL at several stops and in the CFL. Home starts. Doug Flutie, 93 and 15. One is an action and two is a trend. 93 is <laughs> we get the point. When we return, the undefeated Vikes in Tampa. Can they keep it going? one 800 collect presents the fun way to save on collect calls use one 800 collect now that's easy to remember it's cheap it's cheap it's, it's easy one 800 collect as in collect calls of course duh one 800 collect save a buck or two Duke, Carolina, but the feud between the field reporters and the anchors runs pretty deep. Hey, move the utility van, Schwartz. I got work to do. How about me? Put me on the program. Hey, guys. What's you. up? Why don't you go work on another story we're not going to air? With them, you got to watch your back. Watch it, Bureau boy. You want a piece of me, desk jockey? It can get pretty ugly. Who's got style? I think Keyshawn has a pretty good style. Dion's just total style. He's, he's, he's the king of style. The guy's always dressed impeccably. I think Mike Holmgren's got a lot of style. Ricky Williams, he's got the crazy hair going. Ain't nobody beat Sapp's hair, dude. There's no better style than that. But he got the game to back it up. Any lineman trying to pull off a style, is that's not right. Ah, name it, man. The fur coats, the pantyhose. You know, I guess if you, if you look good on the field, you play better. <laughs> and to me, that's style. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Two years ago, Minnesota was 7-0, came into Tampa with their only regular season loss. Four years ago, Minnesota was 5-1, came into Tampa. They lost the game, but Tampa Bay, wondering if they could do it again against 7-0 Vikings. Tampa at 3-4 needs a win in a hurry, and Warren Sapp of the Bucks defense certainly took control. And what a dominant play this is early on to set the tone for your football team. Just destroys the offensive lineman in front of him, runs, runs through, forces a turnover. Tampa Bay's ball going in. So when the defense forces turnover and gives Sean King a short field, what could happen? Keyshawn Johnson powering, powering, powering through Chris Dishman. 7 0 Bucks. Warren Sapp, oh yeah. With a score of 7 3 after Gary Anderson field goal, Sean King. This is why Tony Dungy says he's our quarterback. To Warwick Dunn, 23 yards, 14 3, Buccaneers. Well, you've got the matchup you want. You've got Warwick Dunn on linebacker Ed McDaniel. Ed McDaniel is going to see Jacquez Green in the slot flash in front of him. He stops for just a second, and that's long enough for Ward Dunn to get wide open for the score. So 14-3 Tampa Bay. 
Dante Culpepper, seven for seven in his NFL. So Randy Moss, are you kidding me with this one in a catch? 14-10. I don't even know if you comment on this. You just enjoy his athleticism. Oh, my God. Touchdown, Minnesota. Their offense has got no criticism with plays like that. For Tony Dungy's offense, they're trying to redefine who they are. But today, they defined it in a different way because Sean King to Keyshawn for 23 yards. Three plays later, and this underutilized, pretty good pass catching tight end, Dave Moore. Beat the double coverage 20 yards, 21 to 10 bucks. King would have four touchdown passes today to the chagrin of Dennis Green. The score 21 10 second quarter. You saw Warren Sapp. This is Derek Brooks making the big play. The two biggest players on the defense, along with Lynch, make the play. Touchdown, Brooks. 28-10, Tampa Bay after the hit by 53, Shelton Quarles. Key to this play is everybody on the same page. Brooks knows the blitz is coming. He knows that he can keep that tight coverage at the line of scrimmage. Ball thrown up for grabs. Pressure on Culpepper. Easy score for Derek Brooks. Audie Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, says we have everybody's number today. We know exactly what Minnesota's doing. E.T. doesn't need to phone home. Viking trail 34 to 13. Culpepper. Here's another one of those big defensive players. Been quiet for a while. Donnie Abraham. He Isaacs his way down the field. Sap happy. Fourth, Randy Moss not happy. Unfortunate issue here. He touches Lloyd McPeters, the official on the arm, and it bumps his cap with the helmet. He's called out, uh, tossed out of the game. And well, there will be days like this for the Vikings. Although they move along up until the last weekend in October, but it's the Buccaneers that look like the team that many of us thought they might. Winning by the count of 41 to 13. We told you about King's touchdown passes, and every now and then you gotta sit back and listen to your head coach. Coach talked to us last night and said, you know, visualize yourself being the one that made the plays because every time we played this ball club, it's always winding to four or five plays. And, you know, I got a one-on-one -on -one rush with, you know, Lucina, and I, I put a good move on him, and Dante's right there in front of me, and I hit him and knock the ball loose, and, you know, just started to fly from that point on, and Keyshawn punches it in for us, and we just rolled from that point on. Everybody kept pouring gas on the fire, and we played a real good game today. Being able to talk to Coach Dungy and talk to Sean King and talk to Les Steckle and tell him, you know, you got to let 19 and 28 eat. Let us eat till we fall to our face. And that's what they did today. They let us eat, and then we got everybody else involved, and it worked for us. We missed an opportunity to go undefeated and win the world championship at 20 at all. That's the only thing that we lost out on. That's the only way our mindset works. We'll let Tampa and Tony take care of them, and they'll let me and our team take care of ourselves. Hey, 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 look, Dennis is right. You're two yeah. up on Detroit who yeah. lost. There's still three up on Tampa. Minnesota has been the story in the first half of the season, mm -hmm. but today it was Tampa Bay looking like a team we thought they might, and the team... Maybe this is a new image they have. Well, great overall team effort. I think the defense did what they usually do. You create the turnovers, especially close to the goal line. Sometimes you get them and you score. Give Sean King a chance to work with a short field. He showed a little lack of poise the last couple of weeks. He came back very poised today to four touchdowns. And Dante Culpepper, his first under par effort this season, he gets one. If you would have told them they're going to be 7-1 and one at the halfway point, I think Coach Green would take that. On the eighth tee, he's allowed to hit one in the That's woods. That's correct. Now, here's the big picture. Minnesota was 7-0, the Rams falling a week before. So you know that those 72 Dolphins, Don Shula and Zonk and Kick and Mercury and, and Nick Bonacani and the list goes on and on, and Larry Little and Warfield, they all put that bottle of champagne right. in their own fridge. And sometime tonight, they'll get on the phone together and it'll sound like... <laughs> the 72 Dolphins, still the only team to make it through the whole season. Undefeated, untied. <laughs> Champagne for everybody. Meanwhile, as we go inside the numbers, Sean King, four wins, perfect. 10 TDs, no picks. Four losses, less than perfect. Tampa, who has won three, then lost four in a row. Will this be a winning roll for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa the preferred card of the NFL.